Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be talking about converters and what they do, what sort of quality loss you potentially might get, or if any at all. There's been obviously a lot of videos of people fairly recently where um, they've been saying that don't use converters, just get closer and etc. So we're going to look at these now and uh, I will show you photos I've taken with a converter on the 500mm and on the 300mm and show you what quality loss you do get, if anything, and is it worth going th for them. But first of all, we'll go through the converter, see how it works. I'll show you what to look for on a lens. I'm gonna use my 70 to 200 as an example to show you what you need to look out for to see if one of these will work. And uh, we'll go from there. So let's move to the next stage. So this is my converter. This is the two times. I don't use a 1.4 at the moment, but I do wanna get a 1.4 as well to add to my collection just because it's useful to have um, both the 1.4 and the times 2 pretty simple bit of kit nothing much really um, crazy on it you just got your release here which I'll show you how to use in a second and the lens itself you've got your deep insert here so you can stack um, converters on if you want to but you'll lose light every time you add one on and then you also have on the front an extruding piece of glass that is what goes into the lens itself. You've got your contact points along the side here as well, so you can use your autofocus. There is a list online of Canon approved lenses that do work with this. This is a Mark II. Um, so there's a list of everything that works fully with this, and there's a Mark III obviously with a list as well. But what you need to look out for on your lenses, so we're using the 70 to 200 f um, 2.8 as an example, you need to make sure your lens has this sort of indentation here, which is where this part goes in there. And then all you need to do is line up the red dots as normal, quarter turn, and bosh, you're in. And that turns this 70 to 200 into 140 to 400. But obviously you do lose two stops of light, so it goes down from a 2.8 to a 5.6. But as long as it's a bright day, you literally won't notice much difference in quality, and you might gain a shot that you wouldn't necessarily have gotten without the converter, because obviously you're limited to 200 mil, now you've got 400 mil. If you use a cropped sensor camera, you get 560 mil. So you can, you know, you see where the common sort of moving on there is that is actually fairly useful to have converters. These are obviously more useful if you have a prime lens than a zoom lens like this. So I use them all the time with my 300 mil and my 500 mil if I need to. But to release, just push that, push that down there, quarter turn back, and release like that, and that's it. Off, no worries at all. What I do recommend for people to do is to, if they are um, out in the field sort of changing over converters, turn the camera off first, then put the converter on. That stops you accidentally hitting the shutter release button and um, potentially putting dust into your camera while you're trying to fiddle around putting the converter on. I'll always then say, put the converter on first onto the body and then it's easier to then put the lens onto the converter rather than try and put this on the lens. You can do it that way if you want to. Um, but I always prefer putting this on the body first then getting the lens and putting it on the secondary on there. So that's an overview of looking at the lens and talking about um, what it does when you put it on a, a lens here, the converter itself. What we'll do now is look at some photos I took with the 300mm and a converter at London Zoo to sort of show you the quality that the images are even with a converter on. So the first image we're going to look at here is of a gorilla at London Zoo. You can see some slight lines on here. These are actually from the wire I had to shoot through to get this photo. But the main thing is this is with 300mm f2.8 with the times 2 converter on and focused in on the eyes there. Super, super sharp still. I can't really see anything that would sort of give away that I was using a converter on here. Um, super, super sharp still. And if it wasn't for these really annoying wire lines, it'd be a really good keeper photo for sure. But um, because of them, I've, I've kind of put it to one side, but it's a good example of how sharp um, the images still can be on this one. The next one we're gonna look at here is of a, um, a young cannabis monkey. And this is again, 300 mil with a converter, focused in the eye. Because it actually giving you that little bit of 5.6 sort of aperture, it's actually, um, giving you a bit more of the, the animal than rather than being at 2.8 anyway, which is actually quite nice, but you can still see a nice reflection in the eye there um, because it's just super, super sharp still. There's, there's nothing really image quality loss you can really tell from this, even looking down at the hand as well. 
nice bit of um, sharpness there all around the face and you've still got a nice sort of blowout from the rear um, being a 5.6 so again shows super sharp where you should need to be with it really and the funnel we're going to look at here is of the female line at London Zoo and the main reason we're going to look at this is because this has actually been cropped in as well so this is on a 300mm times 2 converter and is 100% crop and the image quality is still absolutely fine very much usable eyes are nice and sharp detail around the face um, still nice and blurred out in the background as well so it just as I said from the start shows you that you can quite happily use a converter without problems I would recommend probably more using them with the prime lenses rather than the zoom lenses because with the zoom lenses you've got that bit more freedom of moving in and out but I use these at zoos, I've used them out in nature, you know, I've used them at motor circuits and I've never ever come across an issue with using a converter so definitely something I recommend if you're using a lot of primes then you need to get yourselves a 1.4 and a 2 times converter and definitely uh, go from there. So guys, that's my video on the converters. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've taken on board that these aren't necessarily the worst thing in the world to have. And if you're using prime lenses, you have literally no really other option. Like I'll go to the zoo with, with sometimes wanting to just carry one lens, one camera. I'll take the 1DX, the 300mm and a times 2 converter and you've got a very, very useful 600mm f5.6, super sharp still and just a hand -held holdable 600mm um, with great quality. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, comment and like, and I will catch you guys later on for more content. As always, goodbye.